Compact trucks haven't had their moment for quite a while, but now that midsize trucks are getting so much bigger, there is a lot of room down below. I'm here with Ford's Maverick, and this is the first chance I'm going to have to drive it. For the time being, the Maverick doesn't have competition other than in the Hyundai Santa Cruz, which Hyundai doesn't even call a truck, but a sport action vehicle. The Maverick, on the other hand, is 100% being categorized by Ford as a truck. It does sport a unibody construction, so is not traditionally body on frame like other trucks. The Maverick rides on Ford's C2 platform, which also underpins the Bronco Sport and the Escape. Now, some people are going to make the argument, well, it's not as capable or it doesn't really make it a truck, but there are some really compelling reasons why Ford went in this direction. The first, and maybe the most important to some interested in truck utility, but not growing truck costs, is price. The base Maverick starts below $20,000. Above that standard XL trim comes the XLT and the top of the line Lariat. Fully loaded, you're looking at a price below $40,000. And for those prices, you get quite a bit for your money. The Maverick is the first truck to come standard with a hybrid powertrain. Under the hood, Churin's a 2.5-liter Atkinson cycle four-cylinder engine that's paired with an electric motor. That powertrain is mated to an E-continuously variable transmission. So what does that powertrain get you? Well, for starters, great gas mileage, to the tune of an estimated 40 miles to the gallon. No, that's not official yet, but that's quite a ballpark. That's about 500 miles for one tank of gas. When it comes to the hybrid, as far as getting power, the engine and motor sort of bounce back and forth. They work sort of in tandem together to create that power. When you're going slower in the city at lower speeds, then you're gonna go straight into like an all EV mode. But when you are accelerating or you are driving on the highway, then you are going to get into the combustion engine part of it. There is no mode to drive just in pure EV mode in the Maverick, but the two work together seamlessly. Acceleration with the hybrid powertrain feels substantial thanks to that instant torque from the motor. And the CVT, you know, to me it's completely unobtrusive. The noise that's happening when it accelerates isn't particularly a pleasant one, but once you're cruising, it's lovely and quiet. Moving on to the gas engine, hmm, those EPA numbers are very untruck like as well, no? So on this drive, I'm actually getting to do something fairly unique in that I am driving the base model of the Maverick. This is the Maverick XL, and I'm actually really happy to be driving this. Normally they give us cars and trucks with all the bells and whistles on them, but this one I think is going to be one of the ones that most customers buy, and I'm really happy to get in it. This does have the hybrid powertrain in it, and now there's one, one negative thing about that powertrain is it won't won't be available with all-wheel drive. You do have to upgrade to the two-liter EcoBoost. That's the engine that gets 250 horsepower, 277 pound-feet of torque, and is mated to an eight-speed automatic. On either engine, there is no transfer case on the Maverick, so there's no low gearing for greater towing or really tough off-road driving capability. Driving that more powerful two-liter EcoBoost feels spirited. I thoroughly enjoyed it on the Escape, and I think it works just as well on the Maverick too. It accelerates nicely, and the 8-speed automatic transmission responds well to the demands a driver puts on it. A lot of people buy trucks because of what they can do with them, like towing. Even though it's not as robust as Ford's mid-size Ranger, the Maverick still got some towing capability. That greater number is with the optional 4K towing package. With that package, you'll get an upgraded cooling system, a seven pin wiring harness, a trailer brake controller, and a hitch. So right now I'm towing a trailer that's about 3,000 pounds and I'm actually driving the Maverick that has the two liter EcoBoost in it. You know, I definitely can feel the weight back there, um, but the power actually feels more than adequate to handle it. Um, I also have the truck in the tow haul mode, and what that does is it extends the gears a little bit, it sort of stretches out the ratios so that I'm revving a little bit higher in the range, which means I have more power readily available if and when I need it, like going up a hill, and it's actually 
working pretty well. I feel confident. So we know what's powering it, but how does the Maverick feel when you're driving it on the road? Driving the Maverick feels honestly exactly like I expected it would. It's exactly like an SUV, like the Bronco Sport. The chassis, the suspension, they're definitely tuned to be nice and comfortable. When you're in a body on frame truck, you definitely feel more of the road beneath you, but the Maverick is just absolutely a smooth operator. This is gonna be a great road trip vehicle. Regular drive modes include normal, eco, sport, slippery, and a tow haul mode. Those change throttle mapping and steering weight. Sport mode in particular gives you some giddy up when you really need it. And like I mentioned earlier, tow haul mode extends gearing ratio so you can access extra power if you're going up hills. The steering on the Maverick actually is really surprisingly nice to me. Yes, it's very electronically assisted, so no, you're not really getting any kind of feedback, but the weight on it is really good. You throw it into sport mode and it gets even heavier. For me, I love it because I just love driving an actual heavy steering car. For some people, it may take a little bit of getting used to, but I think it actually adds to a very pleasant driving experience. Visibility in the Maverick is good. I don't have any trouble seeing behind me and there aren't really huge blind spots. As far as cabin noise goes, it's really quiet in the Maverick. Unless I'm really laying on the throttle and I can hear the mechanical bits start to do their thing. Uh, you know, I really don't hear a ton of road noise especially, which you do get usually from a traditional truck. In fact, it is so quiet in here that you can almost hear yourself subscribing to the KBB YouTube channel. Wow. In fact, the entire experience feels much like an SUV. Speaking of the interior, I actually think it looks really great in here. There are a lot of rugged cues. Yes, there is a lot of plastic, but you know what? That's gonna be really understandable just because of that inexpensive price point. But check out some of the des these design features that they've done here. I really like this door handle. I think it's really great to grab. There's some cool unfinished hardware here. There's some really interesting textures and two-toned colors on the interior. And speaking of, same thing with the cloth seats. Now this is the base model, I mean the base XL model. And there's still like interesting texture and things to look at. So I really think that Ford did an excellent job as far as using the materials that they have. Now as far as comfort goes, I fit really well in here. There's tons of headroom. You can see that there's this sort of indentation here. I'm gonna run into the back seat though that because this is compact, may be a little bit challenging for some taller customers that you have back here. Behind myself, absolutely no problem at all. Again, a ton of headroom. I mean, it's really impressive. I have a lot of legroom behind my ideal seating position. Um, it's pretty basic here, but it's comfortable and I think it looks really good. I'm really impressed. There's a lot of useful storage in here, both up front and in back, including these bins under the rear seats. Although you do lose one with the hybrid because this is where the battery lives. Ford's got accessories for the interior, but will also get owners instructions on how to 3D print their own. The Maverick is a DIYer's dream. Buyers get a standard 8-inch touchscreen for their infotainment needs, and that includes Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. Ford Pass Connect is also standard and has an embedded modem that can accommodate up to 10 users on Wi-Fi. There are standard safety features that include pre-collision warning and automatic emergency braking. But additional safety features in Ford's Copilot 360 suite of safety features is available as an additional package on every trim. For the more advanced features, including dynamic cruise control and lane centering assist, you can only get those on the top Lariat trim. For the record, Ford's lane centering assist is a really smooth system. It's one of my favorites, it doesn't feel obtrusive, and I really like it. On the Lariat luxury package, you get extra nice features, including heated seats, a premium B&O audio system, heated steering wheel, and wireless charging. So it wouldn't be a Ford truck if we didn't have an off-road package. This is the FX4 Maverick, and we're gonna get in it and see what it can do off-road. 
For that upgrade, you'll get all-terrain tires, some off-road mono shocks, hill descent control, and some extra skid plates for additional underbody protection. So right now I'm on a little bit of a sort of a muddy, slightly muddy, like rutted little course, and the Maverick's holding up just fine. Here's the thing though about the Maverick is your maximum ground clearance is 8.6 inches. Even with the Bronco Sport, maximum is closer to 8.8. .8. Now, if you are gonna be doing some serious off-roading, this is probably not the vehicle to be doing it in. This is a great vehicle that's going to get you to your adventure destination if you're biking or hiking or something like that. If you're looking for something that's a little bit more robust, I would say Bronco Sport for sure, or even Ranger Tremor if you really wanna get into serious off-roading, but that's really not this customer. So we're going up a little incline here, and it's handling all of this really well. You can definitely hear in mud and ruts mode that it's holding the gears a little bit longer, so it's revving a little bit higher. You have that power that's more readily available to you just in case you need it for something that's a little bit more tricky. But again, this is going to be to get you to the destination where you can have your adventure. This isn't necessarily your adventure vehicle. So let's move to the bed and see what Ford's got in store for owners back here. There are a lot of really compelling features in what Ford is calling the flex bed. Now there's only four and a half feet of space back here, but Ford is absolutely cramming it full of options for owners. The tailgate is adjustable. There are a lot of built-in spaces to build your own storage. There are tie downs and D-rings for securing your gear, and there's even two bottle openers. But it doesn't really stop there. I mean, you can configure this bed to any way that your creative mind can allow. So if you want to configure it for a bike rack or for lumber or building supplies, you're totally able to do that. Now, personally, I would put a fridge back here because I just like all of the cheese on road trips, but it's totally up to you how you want to configure it. There are going to be over 150 accessories for back here, but you know what? If you don't want to buy those, then Ford is actually also going to teach you how to build them your yourself. So back here is where to me I think the Maverick is really going to be a great challenger to the SUV. So the SUV does have good cargo space but it's limited because you have the roof over it. With this truck bed you have so many more options, so much more space because you don't have that limitation. Oh, and with the Maverick you also have a low load-in floor so getting things in and out is going to be a lot easier than with a traditional truck. Other accessories like a tonneau cover, bed extender, and two 110 volt outlets are available. There are two spots pre-wired for 12 volt power. So yes, for a compact truck, that is a lot to take in. But don't worry, I have a very good feeling that we are going to be talking a lot about the Ford Maverick. There is a lot to talk about. First of all, an incredible starting price. Second of all, a hybrid powertrain that gets sick gas mileage. Thirdly, there's a lot of really great tech in here that comes standard. Those are a lot of things that people are actually looking for. And Ford realizes that and, according to them, say that there are already 100,000 people who have ordered one of these. So, everybody else, time to start throwing your hat into the compact truck ring.